G'day Chris, uh, thanks for joining the new segment of our ARC Service Park. 2004 was your last year in the ARC, you came second, you then went on to a full-time factory drive with the Subaru World Rally team. Um, what was that transition like going from the ARC to the WRC? Thanks for reminding me how long ago that was. 2004 was crazy, uh, 16 years ago now and um, done a lot since then and uh, still have fond memories of those times, obviously competing in the ARC. But I always sort of saw the, the potential outside of Australia and always pushed as hard as I could to do, do well internationally as well. It was an uh, exciting time back then for us. We, we were just trying to do as many rallies as possible, ARC, APRC, World Championship rounds, and we knew that was the key to getting us out there in the world and showing people what we could do. And, and the good thing about it was people from the World Championship would look at people doing well in the ARC and know that they were top-level drivers. So that was, was a big thing. And I guess on that, there was a period there in 2003 and 2004 where you were doing a, a dual campaign, the a, APRC and the ARC. Uh, how many events per year were you doing and how did you manage that from, was it back-to-back round sometimes? Yeah, it was tricky actually to, to switch between cars probably was the biggest thing, jumping out of the front wheel drive, Suzuki, back into a Group N car and it would always take me a couple of stages to, to dial myself back to a Group N style of driving after driving a basically a Group A style car. Um, but I think it taught me a lot about my driving because uh, jumping in that Suzuki was really when I was able to push the boundaries because a car built to spec like that versus a production car makes a huge difference to how aggressively you can drive it. And I was sort of overdriving the Group N car. And so when I hopped in a um, custom built car, then it was more opportunity to, to drive that way and then and then sort of, uh, push yourself even further and you needed that to go into a world rally car i think i have a, a number of like 30 events we did one year we were doing races in china we were doing asia pacific we were doing club rallies we were doing aprc arc and then we did maybe three world championship rounds some may know some may not but i guess you obviously started off the uh, the intention was you were going you co-drove for your brother ben uh, and then decided to do a bit of a a role reversal, at what point did you decide that you wanted to give this a red hot crack and make it a career? Yeah, basically, I actually co-drove for one of my brother's mates and I sucked at that and uh, sent him down like wrong roads and stuff. It was just a, um, a chill at like blind rally and um, sort of got an idea of what it was about. And then uh, I had I co-drove for him and then uh, he decided to let me have a go in his car, which I crashed on the second stage. and. Uh, I realized I was going all right up until then and, um, and we decided to take it a bit more seriously. We actually bought a, an Evo 5 between the three of us, my dad, my brother and I. Dad was going to do some like tarmac rally sprints. Ben was going to do just some local club rallies and then I was going to go do QRC. And we went to the first QRC and I was sort of at the front there, which was my second rally. And we had sort of a little problem with the boost, but we still finished second, I think, in one group N. So dad, who had raced back in the early um, 80s and, and 70s, he got in touch with a few people and then um, spoke to Ed Ordinsky, um, who was obviously one of the top drivers at the time. And Ed said, if you want to go anywhere in this sport, you've got to learn how to do pace notes. It's wasting your time to go and do tulip rallies and, and anything else. So everything you should do is pace notes. Go straight in the deep end. Um, so the next event I believe we did, there maybe was a small event in the middle, was Canberra um, APRC um, in that car. So straight in the deep end. Well, wow. and I guess, was it an element of jumping in the deep end when you had your first year in the WRC? Obviously, you had been doing some APRC and a bit of international exposure, but how big a jump and transition was that? It was probably a big step, uh, Back then, we were talking to two teams about whether to go with Ford or Subaru. And Ford would have been starting straight in Monte Carlo. And Subaru was to miss Monte Carlo and start with Sweden. Monte Carlo would have been a huge step for me, even over Sweden, I'd say, just having never done any tarmac rallies and those conditions. Sweden was obviously a huge step as well. So uh, I luckily got some support from um, the CAMS Foundation and we went and did some training with Tommy Mackinnon and Patsy Hagstrom, who ended up being my gravel crew, actually, in uh, Tommy's place up in New Vascular. So we did some ice driving there in the Group N cars. It was probably a good thing because I remember going to the first test. So the first time I drove a World Rally car was on ice in Sweden. 
I think my fourth or fifth run, I matched Petter's time. So then all the, you sort of got everyone on your side a bit that you, it's not just some random guy turning up that's going to be way off the pace. Then everyone's sort of excited about it. And I basically sat in with Petter and like, I'm quite quick to see what someone does and go, okay, that's where the limit of the car is. Let's, I can do that. And um, that, I still remember that test road. We used to use it year after year. It's one of the, best bits of road and you, you basically six gear jumping from crest to crest and straight in the car with the snow banks a very cool cool experience for me to go straight into that and i think because i drove so many different cars and there was probably a point in new zealand doing the asia pacific um rounds and the suzuki and it's when i really found some speed like really found some commitment in a group a style car where you just brake so late and was so committed to every corner and that, that sort of took me to another level in my driving. And that's what you need to do when you're a world, world rally car. You really have to just take them and, and make them do what you want. And I think the first stage in Sweden, we were fastest in the first split, but we were down the road position a bit. So it swept a little bit. Um, so our first split in a WRC event, we were fastest out of everyone. And then I put it, put it off on the next like, uh, section, like lost 30 seconds. But again, it was it's those sort of things that teams want to see that even though I was taking risks and I was never afraid to take risks, but I had the potential to be fast there. You've driven a lot of uh, different specs and I guess different manufacturer World Rally cars over the time. What was, what's, what was the best one, I guess, no matter what evolution or what period, which was the most uh, outstanding car? I think when we got the S12B... We basically got it to a point where we knew we couldn't make it any better. So we just really got it to a point where it wouldn't do anything silly and we could drive it to a pretty high level. Um, it maybe wasn't the perfect setup, but um, I could drive that thing pretty fast, pretty consistently. We got a lot of podiums in that car. Then obviously a chance to drive things like the Citroen C4, a WRC car on a tarmac event like that was a proper proper quick car and like on the knife edge sort of race car. I didn't like the style of driving in the newer cars as much. I guess the period like through the early 2010s, um, that didn't suit my style as much. I think you could drive them a bit more aggressively. Like you just sort of basically threw the car at the corner and, and got away with it. What When I drive a WRC car, I really drive it on the, on the nose, like to the limit of the grip and almost a little bit circuit style. Um, even though you're going in with a lot of speed, it's not just throwing the car at the corner. Um, where the those sort of middle, I guess they've gone back a bit the other way again now, but those middle generation cars from when I started were, were cars that just mechanical diffs and just basically set the car up and, and drove super aggressively. And that suited some people. And um, I didn't enjoy those as much as the, you, I still remember the first active cars we had. They were so cool. Even though the the car we had in 2005 wasn't maybe the best car out there, it was still pretty cool. Like you'd be in a stage, you you feel the front tires going off a little bit, and you start to adjust the diffs to suit that. And like it was it was pretty cool to um, to get to drive things like that. We fast forward now to to what you're doing. Uh, you're in you've been competing in rallycross for a few years now. Um, obviously, they look like pretty amazing and, and very cool cars to drive. Is there many similarities between rallying and rallycross, uh, or is it a completely different discipline altogether? I learn a lot. Obviously, there's a, a big difference in terms of the racing style, and I think now uh, I've done it for three years. Last year, my race craft was getting better and better, and and things like that. But as for actually driving the car, they're almost harder in a way because they've got so much power. So you have to be so patient, so careful. You're under, under tired, sort of under gripped for the amount of power you had, like well over 600 horsepower. And it's about managing that. And you do that in a WRC car to an extent, but nowhere near as much. And my style obviously worked for it. Cause when I first hopped in the rally cross car, they, um, they asked me to come over and test it 2016 and give my feedback on it. And I think my second lap, we were got their the lap record for their test track. So it, and I just drove it like a world rally car. That's all I knew how to do. I said, okay, this is how I'm going to drive it. So I knew I had the lap speed. Then it was just a matter of learning all the other 
the other stuff, the race craft, the strategy, blocking, getting messed around, things like that. Um, it is good fun. It's frustrating at times. It's entertaining. It's probably more intense at a, for such a short period of time, but nothing beats sending a world rally car down a proper stage. The last time we saw you uh, compete here in Australia in a, in a world championship event was uh, 2014 with the Hyundai team. Uh, at the WRC in Coffs Harbour. Um, we don't have a, a WRC uh, around this year, but how important for you when you were competing uh, at that level was it to have a home round in Australia? Yeah, no, that was great. Obviously, uh, by that time, like I only did two events that year, so it was hard to be competitive um, in 2014. But obviously, back in 2005 and six, that was probably when I had my best chance to try and win Rally Australia and I led it a few times and one time I had a mechanical failure and the other time spun, um, which cost us some time. Doing a home event like that, I always had a bit of extra motivation and always had a good feeling for the uh, the roads in Perth. Um, even the first time we did it, we won Group N there and I'd never, never raced there before. So I liked those stages. I'd never raced in um, Coffs Harbour, so that was, that was something new to me and and I didn't quite have a, a good feeling and a good pace when I went there. I'm sure I'd, I'd get there after a couple of years and, and getting everything dialed in. But um, for some reason, um, those iconic sort of Perth stages were, were ones that suited my style. I, I think narrow stages that are super, super quick um, where you got to commit with the nose and trust the car. And that was my sort of style of stage that was always where I'd win a lot of stages where my, my pace notes in the high-speed corners were very accurate and I could really sort of trust trust them and sort of even first pass just commit fully. So um, they're the sort of style of stages I like. Back when you were doing the ARC, what was your, I guess, uh, most favourite rally uh, of the ARC and who were some of the competitors that you used to have battles with back then? Yeah, well, it was interesting because I didn't do the ARC in 2003 from memory. Because we were basically um, racing in Asia and I didn't know, I'd sort of developed a lot from, say, 2002. So we had 2003 racing more in Asia and driving that car. And the the interesting thing was coming back, we didn't know where we were going to be. We had no idea whether we would be on the pace. Because um, when I left, I wasn't really, I'd done two years of rallying. So I wasn't right at the front of the ARC. Our car was a bit older. Um, we were still learning things. And we won the Privateers Cup, I guess, in 2002, and it went to, to the Asia Pacific. And we got support out of Subaru Australia to run the, the extra car, um, which we bought from ProDrive. Um, obviously, the main guys around then were obviously Cody, Simon Evans, uh, Dean. It was a pretty high level, like, but fortunately, we sort of came out of the box in Perth. And we're quick straight away. I think we, on the first day, we got a lead like way out straight away. So it shows that that hot, hopping in that Super 1600 car really it took my driving sort of to another level. Um, and then I ended up probably overdriving a little bit in the Group N car. Obviously, I like the, the Queensland stages, having done rallies up here a little bit. I remember having really good speed in Rally Queensland and having good battles with, uh, with Simon and Cody as well. It's a long time ago. My memories getting pretty faint to be honest a lot of the stages in australia are good and there's a bit of variety they're all fast which which is good for going to the world championship when you go to rallies like finland and sweden and even uh, england new zealand they're all pretty quick rallies if anything i had to learn how to drive the slower slower rallies we didn't have so many slow stages in australia so when you go to cyprus and greece um, then you had to adjust and, and learn that patient style of driving and not over committing and and not wasting time. We've seen a few people uh, from Australia. Harry um, is yet to sort of, I guess, probably our next next best bet. But we've seen Brendan Rees, Molly Taylor, even Scott Pedera a few years ago have a go at the WRC. Not having a tarmac round in, in the ARC is potentially an area that we need to, to look at. It's something you obviously have to work on if you don't have it in your repertoire. And, and it took us... Um, it, it held us back a little bit, but also it was a good experience because I put a lot of effort into learning on tarmac and I had to basically, uh, they had a tarmac specialist in the team and um, he was always there until I could match, match them. And so when I started matching them on tarmac, that sort of cemented my place in the, the World Championship team. 
Um, so, but I put a lot of extra effort into that. I would do driver coaching, um, training all the time, focus a lot of focus on tarmac, and that's that is like you said, it's something missing. But you've got to find the right roads because there's no point to just go to flat out roads with the odd corner here and there. That's not going to teach anyone anything. It's so different the tarmac in Europe, like when you go to Corsica and um, Spain and those events, and even Germany. To be honest, where you'd find stages like that in Australia, it it doesn't doesn't exist. To be honest, you'll get the odd twisty stage down in Tasmania and things like that. But those stages are so unique over there. And what a, a young driver has to do is probably before a bit like we did with the this ice driving and things like that. That if their goal is to go to Europe, you've got basically got to go over there and start getting that experience even before you like preempt the move you know go and do some of those tarmac rallies and you can go to italy or wherever Um, i remember even neil bates gave me some lessons on tarmac back in the day like everyone was super helpful in the arc that was the the good thing simon evan would take me in the car and like on a test stage and show me like this is flat out like that like those guys were awesome at doing that and i'd jump at every opportunity to to learn from them and that made me like you gave me the motivation, but then obviously then you've got to push yourself even further. And that's that's the biggest thing I'd say for those young guys to get over there and, and learn those those style of driving. And you do a bit with of, of driver training yourself. Uh, you you know both here in Australia and, and abroad. And I know that there was some plans to help a few someone particular in the ARC uh, this year. Is that something you ever, ever been? been mindful of is he ever does chris atkinson want to have his own rally team one day or are you just happy continuing to drive and doing what you're doing it's a, a good point i um i've thought about all sorts of options a lot of where where to take this and fortunately still 20 years uh down the track i'm still still racing and still competitive and i've been very fortunate to be able to do this for a fair amount of my career i do help people out uh, occasionally and um i've fortunate to have been taught by a lot of good people so that's given me a a sort of window into how to pass on that knowledge to other people it's funny because i've been out of the arc so long when you look at my age i think you look back when uh, i guess possum was racing he was he was competitive well into his 40s doing the the arc so it's even crossed my mind that one day maybe i'd like to come back and and have a go at the arc um again having never won it that's in the back of my mind who knows where where I'm going? Uh, my career's been World Championship, Asia, um, America, and maybe I'll come full circle and come back to Australia. Oh, well, there you go. That's interesting. If anyone's listening and uh, has got a budget, Chris is uh, potentially looking for a drive. So we'll kick off here with uh, what's Chris Atkinson's worst habit? Not relaxing. Uh, beer or wine? Beer. Used to be wine. Who's been your best teammate? Actually, recently, uh, Patrick Sandor was really, really good to work with. Got along with him really well. What was your favourite WRC event? I'd have to say, apart from Perth, it's Finland. Like, it's hard to beat Finland. Uh, bike rides or go for a run? Depends which year. <laughs> I'm running at the moment. Uh, and are you a Stan or a Netflix man? Uh, Netflix. There we go. Well, mate, that uh, pretty much wraps it up. No, my pleasure. Thanks for having me along and... It uh, got my mind going a little bit there. (laughs) Yeah, I could see that.